Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the live chat here on Board Archive. Hanging out with Kevin today. We're here on Trillium Lake and that is Mount Hood right there behind us. Uh, here at High Cascade Snowboard Camp for the week. Uh, second day on snow today. What do you think so far, man? How's, how's session one camp in this summer? Yeah, guys, it's been it's been awesome. Um, great to be back up at Mount Hood. It's like just such great vibes up there. Uh, riding with the camp and yeah, it's been great. They got a nice park set up, some jumps, some lots of different features, rails, boxes, just something for like everybody. So yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's been great. And like down here at the lake is a good spot for a live chat. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. So stoked on the spot we got here today. If you ever make it out to Mount Hood, I definitely recommend checking out Trillium Lake. Check out this view for yourself. Hang out at the lake. Go swimming if you want to. But uh, yeah, uh, it's been great so far. Well, the weather's looking really great for the week as well. I think maybe one day where there might be a little bit of precipitation, uh, maybe some snow even. So we'll see how that goes. But for the most part, it's just going to be sunny. It looks it looks pretty good. And yeah, we're going to be on here for 45 minutes or an hour, hanging out with you guys, answering any questions you guys have, anything snowboard related, summer snowboarding. Uh, if you have any questions about High Cascade Snowboard Camp, definitely let us know. And uh, on the chat later, uh, maybe in about half an hour or so, one of our friends and actually a, a camper uh, this week, Ashley, is going to hop on the chat. So if you got any questions uh, for her, she'll be on a little bit later. And also let us know where you're joining us from. It's always awesome to hear where you guys are at. Let's see, we got a, a few people here already. Uh, ben, J Dub. Yeah, man, you got to get out here at some point. It's it's uh, it's the spot to be in North America in summer. First snowboarding. Mao Lu watching from Eugene, Oregon. What's up, man? That's not far from here. No. Eugene. Yeah. Have you ever been up to uh, to Mount Hood for or T line for the summer snowboarding? I think Eugene is maybe an hour from here. Emma, is that, do you pass through Eugene to get to to Bend? I don't know. I think I feel like I've been near Eugene before. I think it's south of Portland. Okay, maybe we yeah. passed through there on the way here. All right, we got Danny Moore. What's up, Danny? From uh, Perisher. Yeah, come say hey at Perisher this year. Definitely, we'll uh, we haven't uh, planned that that far out yet, but we're definitely going to keep you guys posted. Uh, we're going to be here for the rest of session one, High Cascade back for session three and then we have plans to go down to Chile already locked in so that's uh that's coming up in August Taylor Jade hey guys do you have any tips for starting to do jumps what do you think Kevin just like first first jump tips yeah I think when you're first starting out with jumps um what you want to do is uh, before even going into the park, make sure that you're comfortable riding with speed and then uh, practice your ollies and then also just practice lots of uh, doing lots of side hits outside of the park too. If there's little things that you can hit on the sides of the runs, that's like an awesome way to like start to progress and build up towards hitting jumps in the park. Um, but I think a speed is like a big component. So just get comfortable riding with speed and controlling your speed and yeah, it'll get you on the way to jumping. Absolutely, yeah, and, and another thing with jumps, like just kind of on that point with speed is it's usually gonna work out better if you overshoot the jump a little bit rather than come up short and land on the knuckle. So yeah, definitely speed is key. And Ashley was just uh, hitting her first medium jumps today out at High Cascade, so uh, maybe if you're still around when she comes on, we can ask her about that as well. We got Kyle Goodman from Portland. What's up, Kyle? Taylor's from Australia. Robert Fowler from Australia as well. And uh, yeah, George George Maniton. Lake's looking so fine. Season just starting here in New Zealand. Awesome, man. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great season. And uh, I think we are going to make our way down there. So yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Aaron's watching from the Tri Cities. Tri Cities. Washington? Washington? Yeah. What are the Tri Cities? In I don't Washington? know. I imagine it must be Seattle area, or maybe it's the eastern part of the state. I don't know. And Tuo tu tu Yang, did, did you guys try any new boards yet? 
Oh yeah, we sure have, yeah. Yeah, what were you riding today, man? So today I was riding the Lidtec uh, box knife and it felt pretty good. It has the C3 profile, so more like camber dominant under your feet. And yeah, it felt snappy and felt really nice. Yeah, it was like flexible enough to get into some presses. Oh, oh sorry guys, you, the YouTube app literally just crashed. So yeah. hopefully that does not happen again, but glad we were able to just resume with you guys. <laughs> sorry about that. Let's see if I can uh, find our place here. Uh, yeah, but we were talking about boards and yeah, I oh, had, yeah. had a good time on the box knife today. Uh, I would recommend it. It does seem like a slightly narrower board than I'm used to. So I would say if your shoes are bigger than, if you're size 10 and over, I would probably, I may not get it because it's a little bit narrower, but if you're like a size nine and under, I feel like it's a good width board, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they make that board in, in wide options, but yeah, you can maybe check out a wide option as well. And yeah, that was your first time trying the C3 camber from uh, Mervin? Yeah. yeah, first time and it felt good. I At one point I like, yeah, I did make, make a turn and felt like catch a little bit. So that full camber is a little bit more catchy. Um, but I definitely felt like there's a bit more control, a bit more snappiness to it. And yeah, it was good. Awesome, man. TJ, yeah. what, were you, what were you riding today? I was on the 2020 Solomon Villain today. So I haven't ridden that board in a couple of seasons. So stoked to, to try it out again. Had a lot of fun up there. And um, yeah, we still got four more days on snow. So yeah. We might get on a few more boards yet to come still here at High Cascade. And we got Brad G. What's up, Brad? And Notorious H-A-N. Any travel recommendations for Mount Hood? Places to, to stay, food, entertainment, etc. Nice. Um, yeah, I'd recommend food. That we just had some food at the taco shop in government camp. And it was good. I had like a taco salad. It was yeah, it was pretty solid. I liked it. Yeah, that was how good. Were, how was yours? Uh, yeah, I had a had a burrito there. It was it was really good. Yeah, and it's pretty good value as well. So the taco shop in Govey. Was it better than the El Burro Loco or El Burro? Is that what it's called? El Burro Loco. Yeah, yeah. I was actually I was going to mention that place. Another great place for uh, for Mexican food is El Burro Loco just is down the great, road. Is it great though? Which one did you like better? I like Del Burro Loco better. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. because oh, cool. I mean, like, I think I like the that there's potatoes in the veggie option at El Burro Loco, oh. so it's like a little more, a little more filling. My potatoes weren't that co weren't cooked very well. They were, they were kind of crunchy potatoes. I'll have to give them another chance, man. I think, I think, I, don't the, know. I think the potatoes were crunchy the last time I was there, too. Last year? <laughs> last year, Really? Yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of raw potatoes. Um, but, uh, yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, if you can... We, um, uh, last year we stayed at an Airbnb close to government camp uh, or in government camp and it was like a really nice kind of little like cottage um, spot it was it was yeah it was cozy yeah um, we were there with uh with our friends Rav and Yannick and yeah it was when you're splitting it you know four ways and I think we could have fit even more people in there it's it comes out to be a pretty good value and uh, we were riding the Spring Pass at Mount Hood at that point. So uh, if, if you guys are looking for a place to ride in North America for April and May, the pass is like $130 or $140. Bucks. You can ride all April, all May. Um, yeah. You can camp out around the lake too if you're into into that stuff. Yeah, there's some cool uh, free camping around this lake actually. So you can camp here for, I think, up to two weeks for free. Yep. Yeah, and then so. I, th I think... There's other campsites you can move to after the two weeks, like in a, in another area away from the lake and, and keep going if you want to. But yeah, lots of options here, like camping, um, cabins, hotels. There's, yeah, lots of options to stay. Yeah. Uh, even like the High Cascade Summer Camp, uh, check that out. It's it's a really cool way to spend like a week. They, they hook you up with accommodation, with food, with coaches, with lift passes for the mountain so that's another cool thing everything yeah definitely high cascade is amazing if you guys have an opportunity to check out the camp they have a campus down the road as well with like a massive outdoor skate park indoor skate park they got a demo center um there's also a burton demo center in government camp the the town closest to mount hood um, and that's open to the public so you guys can try next year's burton boards for free as well i don't think they're open in the spring though i think that's just summer 
And uh, yeah, Sandy's nearby, Portland's nearby. There's there's lots to check out. There used to be a blockbuster video in Sandy just a couple of years ago. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool to visit. Yeah, I wonder if it's it's got to be gone now. No, it's gone. We checked yeah last time. All right, we got uh, Hank Wilson from Salem coming up to T-Line on Friday. Cool. Awesome, man. Yeah, I think w we should still be up here on Friday, so yeah. maybe maybe we'll see you up at Timberline. Yeah, man. Hank, we'll see you up there, man. Osvaldo from Colorado Springs. Yo, Osvaldo, OG. What's up, man? Uh, Wyatt Rodas, uh, leaving Mammoth right now. It was pretty decent. Cool. Sick. Yeah, it looked like uh, from some of the videos and Instagram stuff on from Mammoth, it looked like uh, lots was still open, like sun was out, so Mammoth looks great. Yeah, the, the setup looked like a lot of fun. They still had a ton of features up from the, the recent videos I've seen. Okay, so Riley's got a question here about uh, GoPro. Best way to mount GoPro to your helmet and what mic do you guys use for the GoPro video? Sending love from Oz. Thanks, Riley. Um, yeah, for the, for the helmet cam, we, we just use the... Uh, it's like the kind of elast elastic kind of yeah helmet mount versus the one that you actually stick on the helmet. I think it's just a little a little more versatile, and that way you don't have like a, a permanent piece of plastic on your helmet. Yeah, it's just like a strap-on mount. And I think it's it's kind of cool because you can because you can take it on and off very quickly, and then you don't have that yeah permanent um, sticker. Uh, especially if you like go through a couple different helmets, it's kind of convenient to just have the strap on, and then. You can kind of like move it around a little bit too and i don't think it has it has a strap flown off of our heads while riding yet i think it's only happened once for me and it was like deep in the winter we're like riding through powder which is honestly like a really bad time for that to happen but it was i think it was because there was already a little bit of snow on my helmet when i put it on so there's oh. like rubber grips on the inside and they didn't like it the full grip but it works really well yeah pretty much no issues with it and then the mic we use, we have, uh, see, we got the GoPro mic adapter, which is actually really difficult to find for some reason at the moment. Yeah. And then we have the, it's like the Rode shotgun um, compact or mini, which one is I it? I think it's the mic micro. Micro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's actually the mic I'm using right now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it sounds all right on the uh, live chat for you guys. Is yours the same as mine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the same mic. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the setup. Yeah, we're using actually the mic, that same mic right now with the phone. Well, no, this it's the same mic, but this particular one is, is mine. We've got two of them. Yeah. Or I think we've got three of them actually. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question, man. We got Bryce from Tasmania. Very cool. It's awesome, man. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, ben says, how does the beer in Oregon compare back home here in Whistler? Um, I think Oregon takes it like yeah. The beer in Whistler is good, but there are like just hundreds of brewing companies in Oregon. Uh, I know down in Bend, Oregon, almost every restaurant is like connected to a brewery. So it's uh, Whistler beer is good, but the the options in Oregon are just like there's thousands. So much, so much <laughs> good craft beer down here in Oregon, and yeah. Deschutes in Portland and in Bend, we've checked out that both of those breweries, and yeah, that's they have, I think one of my all-time favorite brews. But shout so. out to the Whistler breweries too; they're they're doing a good job as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, you got a super chat up there as All well. Right. Let's see if we can uh, scroll down here to the super chat. Just scrolling through, guys. Osvaldo, the OG. Oh, shout out, Osvaldo, <laughs> man. Uh, so he's saying, when you guys went to Austria, was it complicated heading to the resort from the airport? Also, which mountain was it? And was it Icon or Epic Pass? Great question, man. So when we went to Austria, it was a bit of a, a unique situation. So we actually started off the trip flying into London and met up with our friends, uh, Nirav and Yannick. And, um, and we ended up driving over to Austria. So we drove into Austria, yeah. Yeah, it was it was kind of hectic, but it was it was awesome. Honestly, like looking back on it, we were able to do the indoor snow center right outside uh, London there, Hemel Hempstead, and then it was like a 15-hour drive straight to Austria. So yeah, it was it was great to have a car, and and those guys knew their way around. So and we and we had booked a place ahead of time, so we had like a, I think it was through a, a VRBO or one of those websites where you can book accommodation, and 
the passes were actually it wasn't it, we said that we went to see Anton and it wasn't on Epic or the Icon Pass. No. Um, so I think what we actually contacted the resort ahead of time and they gave us some passes in exchange for doing some uh, promotion stuff with the videos. Um, but I don't know if there's many resorts in in uh, that are on the Icon or Epic. Um, but we've also been to the Stubai Glacier in Austria, and it was a, we just we rented a car in Munich, drove to um, the valley close to the Stubai Glacier, and then it was the same kind of deal. We had booked a place ahead of time through VRBO, and then lift tickets. They helped us out. Yeah, yeah, similar situation. And it wasn't it wasn't very complicated as far as you know traveling from no. Munich to Austria. It was very straightforward, like picking up the rental car, everything. Um, yeah, pretty much everyone speaks English out there, so it was it was very smooth. And I, I speak a little bit of German, so when yeah. when I had to, that that was helpful. Yeah. But yeah, Austria is very organized, very clean, very like I don't know. It was it, I never felt. Uh, confused in Austria everything was laid out very very nicely same yeah great infrastructure out there and the resorts uh, yeah the resorts were great too like the the lifts were like perfect the lifts were amazing um, the gondola the was like brand new yeah the gondolas had Wi-Fi yeah it was just like did. really nice spot all right and Jen saying told you the box knife is something for you Kevin <laughs> you called it yeah man yeah dude yeah uh, I liked it a lot man it's uh, the c3 I'm liking the c3 I think I like c3 even more in slush because uh, when you're in that slushy snow you just need that added stability yeah I got to be able to push that heavier snow around no I, doubt I did have like one landing on a jump like way in the back seat on my tail and the c3 definitely helped to just level me out all right we got a, another question here from guitar dude hey dudes heading to New Zealand for my first full proper season any good tips for surviving a season nice. and snowboarding almost every day hope you guys can come to remarkables or coronet peak cool dude enjoy man yeah New Zealand is uh yeah it's awesome for for North American summer I mean or if you're from you know Oz or New Zealand I mean you're gonna have think, a great uh, time man yeah what are some like mistakes that people make when they first go out to a season Ooh. I, think, I think one when i first went out to whistler for the very first year i noticed that a lot of people ran out of money in the first couple months because sometimes you like your work doesn't start right away or you have to wait a few weeks to get your first paycheck and people just are like going out they're excited to be there they're partying they're like spending money and buying new gear and the next thing you know they're having to leave town because they don't have enough money to pay the next month's rent. So I would say that's a common mistake is just kind of like not having enough money to start out with or just spending it all in the first month. So yeah, I would say go easy the first month. Yeah, definitely don't run into that situation. That would be a shame. Uh, what else? I think as far as snowboarding every day goes is, uh, you know, pace yourself like you know, obviously definitely make a point to progress throughout the season, but, you know, base, base it off the conditions and, yeah. and don't, don't beat yourself up, you know, take a down day when you need to, if you're feeling, you know, just completely exhausted, you know, that might be day or if you head up, you know, you have like a bad edge catch just cause you're not quite as on point. So take rest days when you need to, maybe you can even time that out with, with the weather. If you have some untimely weather. Um, yeah. Cause you have a, when you have a long season like that, you don't want to have like some kind of injury in the first month either either so definitely yeah just pace yourself if it's an icy day go easy or or just stay off the mountain yeah and uh yeah if you can uh find a job where you can work evenings that's just maximize the snowboard time too so hopefully uh sounds like you got a pretty good setup man yeah and Any, moving to like moving to a small town or a resort town or getting into that community uh at the resort um I would say just try to like be wary of not getting a bad reputation of like doing weird things or yeah. there's some people that like you know they just get into trouble or they goof off or whatever it is and because you're in that small tight community you can you can kind of like get a bad reputation so just you're, you're, be on, you have to be on better behavior in a smaller 
tight knit community. You're going to be running into the same people frequently. Like yeah. that, that's kind of how it is in Whistler. Like the people yeah. that are there year round, you see them all the time. So yeah. yeah, definitely, you know, try to make friends with all the locals and yeah, I'm sure you'll have a great time, man. All right. LTR. Uh, hey, hey, Teej, does the Battalion Surfers 3BT make the board ride any different to a normal flat bottom board? Uh, a bit more squirrely, maybe. So I would say, I mean, for the surfer, you know, super directional powder board. In, in powder, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but you definitely notice it on the hard pack. It is a little bit looser. Oh, some ducks coming in for a landing right next to us. Um, but yeah, on the on the hard pack snow, it definitely is a little bit looser, um, a little bit more buttery. But how does it feel in the powder? Like when you're going from edge to edge, is it a quicker transition? Do you find or totally? Yeah. yeah, I think that's actually a big standout with the 3BT. Even on hard pack too, like um, it almost feels like you're rolling from edge to edge, in my opinion. So once you get used to it, you can have. Yeah, very quick edge to edge transitions. Uh, the 3BT, you know, on the, the surfer has the POW 3BT. So it's a very kind of aggressive uplift, which helps add more float as well. And uh, yeah, the surfer is a great board. And I think as, as a powder board, like primarily powder, maybe, you know, if you have to get around, do some, some free riding on it, it'll, it'll work pretty well. It does have a bit of tail, but. How does it compare? Like, would you say like when you're, initiating turns in powder like compared to like a board like the storm chaser because the storm chaser is like they got that big peak and it's, it's pretty flat right yeah it's like, well the thing with the storm chaser it's like it's kind of similar but the storm chaser has like pretty much no tail so it's uh it's very quick to turn as well but it more comes from the back of the board actually being able to rotate it quickly versus mm -hmm. the surfer i think you can actually like roll around a bit more and uh Cool. Kind of, yeah, use that part of the board a bit more. That looks like a fun board. Yeah, I want to I wanna try it. Dude, <laughs> you, you need to next season for sure. <laughs> I think I might I might pick one up as my powder board for next season. I think you got another live chat some, or a super chat somewhere, man. Um, all right, yeah, I think I saw one a little further down here. We got that oh, one. Oh, there it is. Shout out to uh, Reggie as well in the chat. Thanks for tuning in, Reggie. Yeah. We're in your, we're in your country, man. We, we're in yeah. the USA. Made it back to the States. Stoked to be here. Next stop, uh, Philippines. <laughs> um, so there was a super chat, uh, but it says message retracted. So shout out to whoever that was. I appreciate the support, but nice. I don't know who it was or what the question was. Miscellaneous super chat. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's it for now. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, so prototype two, nice name, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey TJ and Kevin, what's your thoughts on Never Summer Boards and the Camber Rocker Combo? Oh, I see. I see where the name comes from now. Um, yeah. So yeah, what 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 do you think about the the Rocker um, Camber? Yeah, I haven't ridden any Never Summer Boards, but I do like the Camber Rocker Camber Combo. Um, I feel like it creates this thing where you have uh, stability from the camber and then the rocker adds in that just a bit more looseness and uh, forgiveness when making turn turns. Uh, it allows you to swivel the board a bit easier. Uh, so I think it's it's a good thing. I feel like maybe when the camber rocker camber combo thing first came out seven or eight years ago, um, I don't think they quite had it tweaked properly. and. And, but the boards I've been on recently, they've all been really fun to ride, um, makes them more versatile so you can take it in the park or like even with my uh, board, the GNU Space Case, you can also take it into the powder. Um, so just, yeah, it makes the board more versatile and I think it's, I think it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool thing. I would highly recommend it to like beginner and intermediate ri riders because it gives you more forgiveness while riding. Yeah, still super versatile. Yeah, the Prototype 2 in particular, you know, just playing off your name there, I think is a, is a really fun one. And yeah, nev I've been really happy with all the Never Summers I've ridden. They've been a lot of fun. And um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, you get a little more leverage for presses and things as well, I find with that rocker between the feet, which is nice. Yeah. Yo, and Tom Bile Locks says, hi from Chile, nice storm is coming. Uh, some resorts open this Friday. Epic. Very cool. So glad to hear that, man. What's your home resort? And we've been just a question if uh, we're kind of debating going to the northern resorts or southern. 
um, if you have any advice. Yeah, just anybody on the chat, if you have uh, you know any recommendations for that, we, we're definitely open to, to any uh, opinions out there. So yeah, we've got the flight locked in, but the details are still kind of up in the air. But yeah, glad to hear, man. Hopefully, uh, hope you get out there and enjoy the, the fresh snow. Teal W, what's up, man? And it uh, looks like another super chat came through here from Tyler Babin. What's up, Tyler? Are you guys doing a Tahoe trip next season? Uh, maybe I've got it figured out this time. I I think we, we definitely are going to make a trip down to to Cali. Is that Tyler from Sport or X? Is that? No, that's that looks like Rob. It does kind of look like Rob. Like Rob but... Sunglass Rob. Because, <laughs> Ty, dude, Tyler's been on a bunch of the live chats. Oh, really? And um, that would be... But yeah, Tyler from Sporter X, his last name isn't Babin, I don't okay. think. But, and uh, it could be. We could be, co we could be going to Tahoe. We definitely want to get down to California again next year. Um, we've actually been riding with uh, Janice Spateri, if any of you guys uh, have seen her YouTube channel um, up here at Mount Hood. And she's, uh, she's from uh, L.A. and rides down there. So um, it'd be cool to get down to Mammoth, maybe link up with her and, and do some riding or even get down to bear and some of the other spots in California that you yeah, want to get to. I feel like, yeah, that's been uh, just an area in general that we haven't really been able to explore too much. So yeah, Tahoe, I'd love to get back out to North Star, check out some of the other resorts and, you know, the other spots in California too. Bear, bear is high on the list. That's most likely going to go down next season. But yeah, we'll keep it uh, posted for sure. If oh yeah. We get to Tahoe. That's still, that's a ways out. Joe W. Wow, most, most picturesque live shot I've ever seen from you guys. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I had to do it. You know, we had the opportunity, and um, it's it can get kind of crowded here. There's like a, a little bit of a beach area, people fishing, and um, you know, sending out kayaks and paddle boards and stuff. But it's it's actually pretty quiet today. So, you know, this is this is probably my favorite view at at Mount Hood of Mount Hood. So. It's probably like one of the best views just ever. It's like one of the most iconic. I think it's, it's like the <laughs> iconic Mount Hood view. So, yeah, if you make it out here, you got to come to Lake Trillium. Thanks, Joe. All right. Uh, okay, JC, uh, what size boards do you guys ride for park compared to your weight? Uh, yeah, what's your go-to for, yeah, for park riding? Just uh, like a little bit uh, shorter compared to the, my typical all-mountain board. Um, so today I was on a 156, which which is uh, probably the smallest board I would ride. So I weigh 180, like four, 183 pounds. Um, so that's probably I'm probably on the big the the larger end of the weight scale for that board. But normally my park boards are 57, 58. I would say the 58 is the, probably the biggest I would go. So like 56 to 58 yeah. for Kevin. That's yeah, pretty solid range for there. For about 185 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And, and Kevin is like six three, almost six four as well. So yeah, that it that's it looks about the same like compared to the the boards I would like relative to our our height yeah. as well. So I weigh around 150, and my go to my ideal size is usually a 154. Um, but I'll really ride anything from. 152 to 155 depending on the board but yeah. yeah 54 would be like ideal all right uh oh somebody said uh austin i just got my first board what bindings and boots are the best to get first board first board so i guess uh have you been snowboarding before like is it did you just decide to jump on a setup rather than renting um if it's your I mean, I think, honestly, I would go for, for more kind of budget uh, still. I wouldn't go for anything too crazy. I would recommend for boots, I'd recommend the Vans, either High Standard or High Standard Pro. But I think the Vans High Standard, they're probably on the lower end of the price point. So for a very first pair of boots, I think they'll be comfortable. Try them on, see how they feel, but I think they'll be a comfortable first pair for you. I think that's a great recommendation. You got man. one for bindings? For bindings, I would uh, point you towards the Union Flight Pro. They come in at 150 bucks. They're super lightweight. They got all the features that you need, and I think just for starting out, I think it's a, a good way to go. Nice. Thanks for the question, man. That's a good one. Uh, Carrie Pierce hopped on the chat. Morning, Carrie. What's up, Carrie? 
Okay, you're, we're in your weather now. Hot. Yeah, the sun has been just hot. Yeah, hot re sun. Relentless today. Like northern Queensland weather. Although I am, I'm in a hoodie and beanie still. But yeah, I've got it was a hoodie it's as well. cold in the shade. Which is, yeah. Which is not like Australia. <laughs> uh, Bert Bertman four got stickers from Board Archive and Snowboard Pro Camp. Nice. Putting them on the Rosigmal jib saw that I got at the end of the season. Thanks, guys, and thanks for all the inspiring content. Sick, yeah. Dude, thank you, man. So stoked to hear we're going to have some stickers on your board, man. Yeah, thanks for picking up some stickers. Thanks for the support. Thank you. I uh, just want to quickly mention, too, uh, shout out to everyone that we've been meeting up at camp the last just two days. I Absolutely. Feel like, uh, like all of Snowboard Pro Camp has come out for Session 1 of High Cascade, so that's it's been really cool. It's been awesome, actually. Yeah. yeah, huge shout out to all the campers. If you guys are watching or you see this later, I've, yesterday we met. I think more people than I've ever met in my whole life <laughs> in one day. It was yeah. it was awesome. So shout out to all you guys. Thanks for saying hello, and yeah, we're so stoked to be here. Yeah, we've we've been meet, meeting just uh, yeah just dozens of people. It's yeah. awesome. Every, everywhere. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, and we got like a few. Um, um, sort of like campers and people that, uh, guys that watch the channel into a video today. So that was uh, pretty fun to, it was like getting them, getting some riding shots with them through the park and getting their story of like their progression over the last few years. Um, so shout out to those guys, uh, Cameron and the crew. Thanks for, uh, thanks for helping out the video today. Definitely. Guys. Yeah. Make sure you're subscribed over at Snowboard Pro Camp. I know you probably are, but if you're not, Go subscribe <laughs> over there. And uh, yeah, what, what, uh, what day are you thinking live chat over there this week? Uh, Thursday, Thursday live chat on Snowboard Pro Camp, and either we'll do it here or on the mountain, like during during camp. Epic. All Maybe right. we'll do the opposite, so we'll be there with the lake in the background. That would be really we'll cool. Do, we'll do the reverse. Yeah, you can't really. If you were if you were here, you could actually you can see the lanes where the camps are, like all the race camps right now. I'm sure that detail is not coming through with this cell phone camera. But yeah, it's kind of like kind of see it. It's like uh, these are kind of it. This is sort of where the camp is right here. Those little snowy fingers. Yeah, and. I guess while that we kind of have that perspective, so that's kind of like the top of the second chairlift. It's called the Palmer Lift. And then you can actually hike up from there, which we did last summer. And I think we're planning to do again at some point this week. Yeah. And you can get like almost all the way to the top, like right about right here. Then you got to kind of do a little bit of mountaineering to get to the summit. So I don't know if we'll go all the way, but yeah, that's if you, if you are, have the experience to do that type of riding, that's definitely a very rewarding trek. All right, shout out to everyone who's hanging out on the chat. We still got like over 50 people here with us right now. Sick. All right. So we got Christian uh, Casabar saying, hey guys, uh, TJ, a few months ago, I had advice about A Basin in May. We ended up going off your suggestion and it was so sick. Nice. Thanks so much. Uh, Brought out the Orca with Strata's amazing trip. Oh, awesome. Dude, so glad to hear that, man. Cool. Yeah, A Basin is, is such a fun little mountain. Uh, hopefully you were able to get up to the top and maybe ride some of the east wall or even the backside. Or I know they got that new zone this year, the Beavers, um, which I checked out a little bit last year, but it was harder to get to. They didn't have the chairlift in yet, but I'm glad to hear you had a great time, man. Yeah, you had a good board for it too. Oh yeah, the Orca. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, A Basin's not going to be on the Epic Pass next year, so hopefully, a lot of you guys were able to take advantage for the last year. It's kind of a kind of a big big change. Oh, LTR asking Kevin, can I grab an ID on your sunnies? Yeah, these are electric sunglasses. Um, I'm not sure what model they are, but they're electrics. Just look for the ones with the. Uh, they have a very unique like, groove on the nose. A little notch nose there. Yeah, like a little notch on the nose. But yeah, they're... I think you should be able to find them. Yeah, these were you know a, the brand. These were a Christmas present from Jill. and They're solid, man. Yeah, yeah I need to I need to get some black lenses for these. I'm kind of... I've had these sunglasses for a couple of years now. They've been holding up really well. Okay, Tom, Tom Block's coming back with the, the chili information. So in Santiago, Valle Nevado, El Colorado, La Parva are high altitude dry snow. 
more alpine, less snowpack. The south, uh, Chilin and Caralco, a lot of snow, but a bit wet, less altitude, like Whistler. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's actually a, a, a unique piece of uh, information to add to the, the puzzle there. Oh, we asked the right person. Yeah, because we we'd actually, or Kevin checked the, the stats recently, and what did you find? Like Yeah, that Caralco gets like almost twice as much snow than, say, like Valley Nevado in the first week of August. Yeah, so that makes it pretty tempting to go down there, but it's, yeah. Oh, that's definitely a factor to consider, yeah. the quality. And Bravo says, hey guys, if you cross to Argentina from Chile, uh, Cerro Cathedral, Cat Cat oh man, I'm, I'm so bad at pronouncing all this stuff, uh, in Bariloche has a fun snowboard park and nice backcountry lines. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it'd be cool to check out Argentina. I feel like we probably won't be able to. You could just hop over the border. But it's maybe, really close. If we could day trip it, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And Tyler just confirming, not from Sport RX. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Echo SX coming in saying Bear Mountain is overrated. All right, good to know. <laughs> oh, I kind See, of. That's what people have been telling us. I all kind of. Be. It looks. At least they make it look that way in the video. Uh, sounds like it's overrated. <laughs> I know, I know it's small. I know it's small, but... Okay. Maybe if we're desperate. <laughs> I, I mean, we got to do it at least once. Just It's just so iconic, you know? Everyone says, don't come here. It's not that good. Maybe, maybe <laughs> just, it's a trap, dude. Yeah. And Johnny Snipes shouting out Janice. Love her videos. Nice, Nice, man. yeah. Check out Janice's channel, guys. She's, uh, she's going to be at High Cascade all summer. All right. Triple A saying come to Solitude or Brighton this winter. And, uh, awesome. I've only ridden Brighton for one day. Um, we did. A, I did a trip to Park City with our friend Garrett years ago, uh, before it was Park City Canyons, and we we headed up to Brighton for a day. I'd love to go back, man. Triple um, uh, A sent TJ an email. Yeah. Uh, shoot me an email. Uh, TJ at boardarchive.com. Yeah. Free free accommodation. That really helps. Thank you, man. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll promote your condo if, if it's rent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so Echo following up. Uh, Bear Mountain slash Snow Summit are the best of the SoCal resorts, but it is hard to justify going out of the way to visit. It's most people in LA. The 10 million people that live in LA, it's just like a quick uh, two hour drive compared to like seven hours to Mammoth. Yeah. Uh, Justin Vasey on the chat. What's up, Justin? Just, hey, just got back to LA from Tahoe. Figured nice. I'd hop on and say hi. Sick, man. Hope you had a good trip. Yeah. I was in Tahoe right now. Just like li live update, snow snow conditions and, and features. What's uh, going on with the Reds? Why does it say Bummer Reds? Oh, let me scroll up and see what's going on here. Reds. There he is. Um, so it looks like Reggie and, and Wim are having a conversation here. Had the Icon Pass last season, and I was close to Bear Mountain, but, uh, oh, didn't have the gut to go alone. Yeah, I don't blame you, Reggie. It's, uh, I mean, being like a primarily park mountain, too, I think it would be not, sure, not ideal to go alone. But I'm sure they have some, I know that Bear's, like, super busy, too, so it's maybe not a great place to, like, probably get creamed by somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Red Reggie also saying, TJ, Kev, I know you already mentioned it, but when are you guys traveling to Chile again? So we're going the first two weeks, so August 1st to, and then we leave Chile August 15th. And yep. then we get back to North America on the 16th. So that's, yeah. That's it. Just about, just about two weeks. Do you see Ashley and Tim around here anywhere? No. Ashley, if you're watching, you're, uh, do, you're, it's uh, your time to be in the left chat. Yeah, if, you, if you're if you're down, uh, yeah, this was both of their uh, their their campers at High Cascade uh, this session, and they haven't been to Trillium Lake, so we kind of told them about some trails, and I think they they're like off exploring right now, but hopefully we'll get Ashley on the chat here. Johnny Snipe shouting out, hit that like button, thanks Johnny. Yeah, guys, appreciate it. A Basin is still going strong. No way. Wow. That's what's up.
Uh, Bravo says, TJ Kevin, why don't you use drone shots on your videos? Do you need a special permit? Uh, well, you definitely do need special permits, um, but there's going to be some drone shots in, in my next video. So the video I upload tonight, it's got some drone shots in it. Of yeah. Whistler and here at, uh, at Hood. Nice. Yeah, check it out over on Snowboard Pro Camp tonight. But, but I've got like a tiny little drone that hopefully nobody gets mad at me for using without a permit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the whole drone stuff, the landscape of that has is, is been changing like continuously, it feels like. Rob Gams, what's up, Rob? Uh, Kevin and TJ repping Mount Hood. Can't say on the you might be here for one of the sessions on T Line, so hopefully we will uh, get yeah. the chance to link up, man. Yeah, Rob, hopefully hopefully we can meet you, man. Have we met Rob before? We met him, I think, when we were riding at the, the spring with uh, Rav and Yannick. Oh, cool. Yeah, like I remember we met him briefly kind of down at the Magic Mile Lift. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, it'd be cool to actually get a lap. And Morgan W up from up in Whistler. What's up, Morgan? Hey, Morgan. Uh, hey, Kevin TJ. Got a board archive hat. Still waiting for it to come. Nice. Thanks for picking one up. Yeah, I got I got it on right here. If any of you guys uh, want to check it out, link in the description. Kevin's got some beanies available as well. We both got some stickers. Uh, super stoked for anyone that picks those up. And uh, yeah, those actually fulfilled. They're like made by a company down in California, and then they're mailed out. It's like. I don't really have anything to do with it once the order goes in, but they usually are pretty quick about it. So hopefully it arrives soon. And um, I they should have sent you a tracking number. So hopefully you got that email. And all the SPC beanies are sent out from my house in Whistler through Jill. Shout out Jill. Thanks for helping out that's, with the, the shipping. Yeah, <laughs> that's the better way to go, but it's uh Well, it's more, it's way more tedious. It is more tedious. <laughs> the orders don't get there as quick, but I think, I think we've gotten everything out. You get a little more say in exactly how you want the merch to be. Right. Oh, look at that. L Locri picked up a Capita DOA nice. waiting to get 2020 Strata. Good combo. Dude, legit, man. Going to love it. Yeah, the DOA is great. Like, um, I, really, I really enjoy it in the slush, in the park. Um, yeah, it's good. It's, it's got a good, like, firmness to it. Keeps you, uh, gives you lots of control. Yeah. And Reggie's saying, uh, I think, to Rob... Uh, Jess and Jonathan are there and actually N Nicole is here Jonathan's wife is here this session So it's awesome to, to be hanging out with her and we got Lucian uh, their son out here as well Yeah, we've been hanging out with those guys and Jess's husband Rizzo. Yeah Yeah Oh Tim's on the chat saying we got lost. Oh no. Oh no Did you guys go? In the woods way? Oh, you must. Yeah, because I didn't see you come back to go around the lake. All right, well, we're going to keep well, the live chat going for just a few if, more minutes. And then if we don't see you, we, we'll come try if, to find you. We'll see <laughs> We'll see if Lauren uh, makes it. Well, yeah, we'll, I'll give you a call as soon as the, the chat's over, man. Just uh, walk uh, towards... Walk away from Mount Hood. Well, they're probably in the forest. They probably have no idea. Like, Get your bearings. We'll, what, send, we'll send a drone to find you. Pull out your GPS, man. Oh, Tyler says, if people are telling you to stay away, it must be good. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards for Bear Man. Yeah, most people are like, yo, come come to my mountain. It's awesome. I and just, then except for... No. Okay. Yeah, I just want to get some shots at Bear Man. Like, just to have, like, you know, in like 20 years from now to look back on and be like, yeah, that's, I, I front boarded that rail. <laughs> I, I, want, I want that. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, okay, so Bryce Dehan got a question for Kevin here. Nice. Uh, Kevin, what are your thoughts on the overall slash bib for riding over the jacket pants combo? Um, yeah, I prefer the bibs. Um, it's just so nice not having to worry about getting like snow or slush or anything up your jacket and into your pants so and yeah like wearing pants up up here it's like i had i actually had a day in the spring where i um fell in the or there were two days in a row where i fell in the slush and i just got like slush all up my like up my jacket and down my pants 
And I was like, what am I doing? I should just wear bibs. So yeah, got the bibs out and haven't had that problem once since. And even through the winter, it's just so much nicer to be wearing bibs and yeah, have zero worries about getting snow down your pants because that's, that's like, it's definitely that's, a downer. That's a downer getting snow down your pants. So yeah, I like, I love them. Highly recommend it. Guys, I was just, there was a bunch of little ducklings right behind us. I don't think I could show you anymore. They kind of swam away, but literally like, like six ducklings and their, their parents just swam by. Nice. Yeah. Check out Trillium Lake if you're out here. Uh, and Justin Vizzi coming through with the Tahoe update saying it wasn't bad. Lots of spring slush. Nice. But it was fun. Cool. Awesome, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jason Nick 85 TJ why aren't you using the Smith squad anymore so I still use them sometimes I just have them set with my low light lens and then I have the Dragon NFX set with my highlight lens so I, I don't have to worry about swapping the lenses I just bring them both what were you wearing today? Um, today I was wearing the Dragons okay yeah I've been using you know we've had great weather recently luckily so I've been re re wearing the Dragons more um, I didn't even notice that you switched but I don't think I'm going to go with the squads next year. Uh, one thing I noticed about the squads actually recently on the glacier, I had like a scorpion fall and smashed the goggles on my face and they kind of like crashed into the bridge of my nose. And they they have like a lot less foam than the, the dragon. So they're mm. pretty comfortable for the most part, but um, I think I like having a little more foam. A little more foam. Yeah, they kind of sit like close to your face. Yeah, the low profile is cool, but I I don't know. I think I'm honestly I'm probably gonna go back to Oakley's next year. Mm. All right, uh, do do. Uh, what's the High Cascade board stock like this year? Uh, they've got you know they got the full demo center, but honestly we had a pretty late arrival, so uh, all the campers had uh, the campers are on it this year with the demo boards. Like so many people are on the demos. Yeah, uh, they got a lot of great stuff, but. Um, you know the way it works is like you can you pick up the demo if, if you want to ride it the whole week you can or you can go in and drop it off and swap it out so it's kind of a you know it's no guarantee that you're going to get the exact board that you want in the exact size but but yeah they had some uh solomon boards some live tech gnu dc uh, dc what else uh capita bunch of capita boards yeah and more more rides a lot of ride snowboards as well yep, ride um, and then uh K2. Apart, K2, yeah. There's only a couple K2s, but... And then apart from that, there's a separate, like, Burton demo center, like, in government camp. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they have a pretty large inventory there. Or, I, we haven't been there this year, but last summer they did. But, yeah, they get a lot. And they also have, like, a bunch of bindings you can ride, too. So I, I was riding some uh, bent metal bindings today. They felt really nice. I need to find out the model of those. Oh yeah, first time trying bent metals. First time, yeah, they were they Working were good. Out pretty good. Yeah, nice. I, I really like the uh, the ankle strap. Felt pretty pretty good. I think uh, yeah. yeah, that was one of the companies that like they're fairly new to the binding game, but kind of like Arbor, they took like all the best features from you know what's been out there and combined it in one thing. So like yeah, you get the 3D molded ankle strap, the adjustable heel cup. And um, I think the big thing with bent metals is you can swap out the base plate for like softer and stiff, the footbed for softer and stiffer footbeds. And I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but it's supposed to, you know, help with the responsiveness. Cool. Um, all right, guys. And uh, I think that's going to be it for the live chat today. Oh, and there's a duck right behind us just to close it out. Perfect. But yeah, yeah. We, should, we should get out of the sun. I'm like, I'm getting burnt. I know, burnt. like we're going to have a sunburn <laughs> on this side of our face for sure. I'm going to be like all here. We did put on a lot of sunscreen throughout the day on the on the snow field, but <laughs> it probably isn't holding up anymore. And Jen says that bent metal is 20 plus years old. Really? Oh, my bad, my bad. I, I, didn't, I didn't find out about them until my second year working at Evo for some reason. So maybe they just picked them up late. Pick up a history book. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for hopping on the live chat and hanging out with us. Thank you for all the great questions and for everyone who did the super chat. Really appreciate the support. Uh, live chat over on Snowboard Pro Camp on Thursday, and I think we're Thursday. probably yep. going to be up there on that mountain. So probably up in the mountain, yeah. Yeah, and hit us up on Instagram as well. Kevin's at Snowboard Pro, Snowboard Camp. Pro Camp. Yeah, I'm at Board Archive, and yeah, fo follow along for uh, 
the, the week here at Mount Hood. Guys, if you get the chance to come visit Trillium Lake, this is a really, really cool spot. And uh, last thing, huge shout out to High